Hello, Randall Monk and Ron Vazane here with a gem of wisdom from Archangel Michael. First of the year, starting out with a zinger of a year. Lots to talk about and lots to experience, so we're glad to be with you. So this uh, gem we're going to read today comes from Rana's book, Magic and Majesty of Ascending Ma Humanity. The Magic and Majesty of Ascending Humanity. That's easy for me to say, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. A self-master is responsive to the surrounding environment while being the observer of mundane life experiences from a higher vantage point, being in the world but not of it, you will experience abounding joy from within your heart soul. You will still experience personal and physical distress. However, you will have the wisdom and the tools to transcend it. So, what do we actually mean when we talk about self-master? Michael talks about it a lot. You must become a self-master. Well, first, let's understand that humanity as a whole, those, the masses that are still uh, partially in their instinctual human nature and, and uh, beginning to become consciously aware of what's going on around them and to have individual thoughts. You see, in the past, as Michael said, hardly anyone in the past ages had an individual thought of their own. That was because humanity was more like, you know, like with the animals. They're, they're in herds, they go in groups, they follow the group, they follow the leader. And so that's the way it's been. We've always looked outside of ourselves for guidance, for our salvation, for to help us, to tell us what to do, and to judge us if we're not doing it. And so, in this day and age, we are coming into our human consciousness and reaching for our higher consciousness on the way to our super consciousness. So we have to begin somewhere. And so where to begin? You begin with the nudgings of spirit if you begin to listen to the whispers of your oversoul higher self. You begin to get that feeling that that doesn't quite fit right for me. There must be something more that divine discontent begins to build. And so you start searching. You start looking for some answers. And the old answers, you begin to think, that doesn't fit me anymore. And you feel restricted and confined. And so as you become a seeker, and your soul is, hooray, hooray, they're listening. They begin to nudge more. And if you are dedicated and you have tenacity and you really mean that you want to learn and grow and expand, you begin to listen. And so gradually you begin to change as you bring in those, those the, the wonderful adamantine particles of light, but just say bringing in the light of wisdom, the light of the higher mind, the light of the expanded mind, the light of a self master. It begins to make you question what you believed in the past, in your subconscious mind. The subconscious mind takes everything literally. And so it starts a process. It begins to stir in your solar plexus. And your mind begins to wander into areas that has never gone before. And as that proceeds, and it's going very quickly now, then, and the divine dispensations there, if your intention is pure and you really want to progress, your guides, your teachers, your angels, your sainted masters, they're going to be there to help you. We have more help than we've ever had before. And that's because everything's speeding up and the time is speeding up and our, our everything is changing, the negativity. And so we got to get with it. And we are. Those who are on the path, they're moving faster than ever before. And it isn't comfortable. It's disconcerting. These things that we're, we've experienced in this time maybe took five or ten lifetimes to experience and, exp and go through. Can you believe that? <clears throat> and so, as you begin to become self-aware of yourself and who you are, and you begin to open those memory seed atoms that are waiting for you to tap into the higher frequencies that are your, is your roadmap, it's like checking into an advanced application on your computer. That's a good analogy now because that's, that's kind of the way it works. 
and you began to getting these little gems of wisdom, these aha, these inspirations. And as you do that, you stop looking outside yourself to other people for validation. What you should do, am I good enough now? Do you begin, you know? And that was the old way. The energetic accords we attached to each other because we forgot we had all of the strength, power, help, the wisdom, everything we needed from that pillar of light. But we expanded into this quad, this cross of matter, which went this way, but it also went this way because these energetic cords that we attached to each other, dragging along the, uh, everything from the past, all of that garbage, like this is designer garbage, all the beliefs and everything that you've carried from past lives, and then projecting that out in the front, and that was your picture of reality. So now, just right now, I'm getting that that cross of matter began to, or come back here, because you begin to draw that in as well as that cross, the cross of matter here, the light and the shadow, it was supposed to be, that spectrum of light and shadow was supposed to be equal. And we were supposed to have opportunities, we were co-creators, we were supposed to be able to co-create and, and, and use our intelligence. And it was supposed to be the good, the best, or the, uh, the good, better, or best choices. But you see, we started using it negatively. And then as we sank into that density of the lower, the lower dimensions that we weren't supposed to go into, the light was like this. And the shadow was all way, way, way. A lot, a lot. So it was very balanced. So what are we doing now? We, as you move along, as you begin to rectify all of that, we're bringing that cross of matter back into the appropriate or the originally designed spectrum of light. And so what it happens then? You stop looking out there for validation. You stop looking out there for answers. You begin to tap into your conscious mind, your intellectual mind, but also you gradually begin to tap into your, your higher mind, your sacred mind, where all of your intelligence, everything you need to know, everything you need to understand is there. And so you begin to build, or you begin to move in a higher frequency hologram, a world of your own. You're still, you're still involved with, like your, we talked about this, your birth hologram and the family and everything. But you're, as you move into your next higher frequency, the highest frequencies of the others, you move down, but you're still in, in these others, but you're beginning to move beyond what was the game before with other people. That's why you're moving up past a lot of people. That's why you're moving beyond a lot of things you did in the past. That's why it's easy to let go of a lot of things that do the addictions and the habits and the negativity and even begin to uh, bring back your mind in, in, and bring it in focus instead of letting the ego desire about it tell you, you need that or you need that person. You need to do this. And that was all projecting outward. You're beginning to turn inward for your answers, which is your truth. And as you're told, you need to run all, all that information, all we say, everything you read, run it through your heart monitor, sit with it, meditate on it. How does it feel? Is it expansive? Is it empowering? Is it helpful? Is it loving? Is it kind? Or is it, does, does it feel negative? Does it feel uncomfortable in your solar plexus? Is it fearful? Is it judgmental? You'll begin to know what your truth is, what is it? If you, sometimes, as we say, there may be something that's radically different and you're not sure. I find that if I put, kind of put it on my shoulder, put, put it aside and ask that it be validated, it will be. <clears throat> and so, what does that mean then, as a self-master? It means you're still functioning in the world that you're now creating because with your thought forms, we, uh, we, mag we magnetize energy to us and we radiate it from us. That's constant. We are electromagnetic energies, just like, just like everything else is. And so, like they say, change your mind, change reality, for our world, the universe, will adjust itself to fit the frequency patterns that you are projecting. And so that's why Michael says, start, begin with yourself. You see, 
become the change you want, as someone says, become the change you'd like to see. First has to start here. And so self-mastery is, I am claiming my wisdom, I am radiating, I'm bringing forth as much love and higher frequencies of, of adventine particles that I, can, that I can integrate. I am taking what I need and then we are projecting it out into the world. I dedicate 20% of the adamantine particles that I bring forth into the world server pyramid. That's true tithing. And Michael says if you do nothing else with that, it is enough. So becoming a self-master means you are the creator of your reality. And as you gain in strength and as you gain, gain in love quotient or as you lift your consciousness, it expands further and further from you. You become that pillar of light. Instead of projecting out this way, you're projecting this way. That's why he calls us lightning rods, light, lighthouses. Because we are, if you could see the, what that beautiful energy that you are sending out and how it affects other people. You know, there's some people are drawn to you and others you feel like they're not very comfortable. We are becoming more intuitive. We are, everyone is becoming more telepathic, whether they know it or not. That's why a lot of these things that are going on, the changes astrologically in the world, the unsettling, even if it isn't affecting you, you're feeling it because it is so frenetic and it's so powerful. And so that's why we put that golden, that golden orbit around us, that protection. <clears throat> and that's why your hologram that you're building is your own creation. creation. And so you better, it's, it really behooves us to begin to, th to focus on what we're thinking. And we'll talk more about that when we, than another time when we talk about the bell zone. <clears throat> because as you go forth, as you bring in more light, you're going to be more and more powerful, and you are become a more efficient co-creator. So, every it's, it's like uh, one of my sayings is you can't hardly move without getting busted right now, because we're being shown what we've created and we have to experience it. So, and anyway, uh, that's where we are, and uh, we're all in it together. So let's support and love each other. And focus on becoming that master of self. That's the most important thing, most loving thing you can do for yourself and for everyone around you so that you can be the example. Randy? Thank you, Rana. Yes, part of being a self-master is, as, as it says in this quote, is being in the, this world but not of the world. And it's being an observer uh, rather than getting caught up in the drama. So when, when you're feeling like you're getting caught up in the drama, whether it's your personal drama or the, the world stage drama, pull back a little bit and observe and kind of tune into what you're feeling and center yourself in your heart center. And you may find that helpful. Much love and many blessings from our hearts to yours. Love you. See you next time. Bye for now. Bye-bye.